kingdom come here. Let your will be done here in us. Jesus, there is no one greater. You alone are Savior. Show the world your love. King of heaven, come. Chapel Online. My name is Chris Atkinson. I'm the pastor of Pinewoods Chapel and I'm so glad that you've connected with us this Christmas season. Through the month of December up until Christmas we are going to be celebrating all about Jesus as this baby in the manger as we celebrate Christmas. Christmas is a great time to get connected with the real meaning of Christmas. Gather your family around your tree your fireplace, whatever that looks like, and listen to some Christmas carols and the explanation of who Jesus is. Christmas time is a wonderful time for us to get connected to God. We can do that by coming to church. We can do that by sharing our faith. We can do that by sharing the message of Jesus with other people at Christmas time. So as we get ready to be encouraged as we gather together online, let's take a minute and pray before we get started. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that we can gather together today and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray today for everyone as we gather together to remember the true meaning of Christmas, that you would really reveal to us that this is a different kind of Christmas, but that you are still the same. So God, we thank you for who you are and we worship you as the baby that was born in a manger, but yet king of all. 
And we pray all of this in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies, with angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King, Christ by Thank you. 
I'm sure this year more than any other year is going to be strange for us at Christmas time with all of uh, the pandemic, second wave, all of those things that are happening. Christmas more than likely is not going to be the same. And uh, there's even been some things going on in the news that have said, well, there's always next year. And, you know, for those of us that really treasure Christmas, that's actually kind of hard to swallow. And for many of us, we have all kinds of family traditions that we do, gathering together the turkey, the presents, and, and spending time with uh, friends and family and all of that stuff. And this year, all of that stuff doesn't look like it may be able to happen. But one thing that stays the same in the midst of even the environment that we're in today is celebrating the birth of Jesus. Because no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing this Christmas, you're going to be able to take time and stop and remember the nativity scene. The story of Mary and Joseph and the birth of their baby named Jesus, who was the Savior of the world. And at Pinewoods Chapel over the next few weeks, we're going to take some time and we're going to look at, at Jesus and try to understand what it actually means that God came into this world to live among us. And today we're going to look at a, a passage of scripture that really speaks to who Jesus is. And for many of us, we know who Jesus is. We recognize that he was a man and the church talks a lot about Jesus but there's some very significant things about Jesus, this little baby that was born in a manger at this time that we're, where we celebrate Christmas. And he was actually the savior of the world. And we need to know why this actually makes him different. And so we're going to try today and answer this question, who is Jesus? And then remembering that this, this Jesus was a baby in a manger. And if you have a Bible or if you just want to follow along in the screen, the, the passages from the scripture are going to show up on the screen. So let me read about this baby Jesus in Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through to 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, 
Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. As Paul is writing this portion of this letter to the church in Corinth, in uh, Colossae, he's really trying to drive home who Jesus is and explain to them the significance of this person, Jesus. And there's a number of things that he lays out here that really just talk to the claims of who Jesus is. And the first one is just this, that Jesus is God. I want you to notice in, in verse 15, it says the image of the invisible God. So God is Trinitarian, is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons in one. This is who God actually is. And we know that Jesus is God because Jesus is the Son. And all the attributes of God are equally found in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And many have actually debated this statement that Jesus is God through the last 2,000 years. It started with the Jews when Jesus was there walking around uh, on earth. And this statement that Jesus is God is fundamentally an important statement to believe and agree with in order to be saved. You see, if a person can't agree that Jesus is God, they actually can't be saved. Now you might say, well, being saved from what? Well, being saved from an eternity, being separated from God who created the world. You see, Jesus is God right from birth, right from that moment of conception. If we think that Jesus became God over his earthly life or became God while he was in the grave during uh, the resurrection, we don't actually believe that Jesus is God. And if that's actually what we believe, we can't be saved. Oswald Sanders said this. He said, if Jesus is not God, then there's no Christianity. And we who worship him are nothing more than idolaters. Conversely, if he is God, those who say he is merely a a good man, or even at best of men, then they're blasphemers. More serious still, if he is not God, then he is a blasphemer. And in the fullest sense of the word, if he is not God, then he's not even good. You see, this is exactly what we need to understand about Jesus, this baby that was born in a manger at this time when we celebrate Christmas, that Jesus is the God-man. Fully God, fully man, 100% God, 100% man. From the moment of conception on into eternity. This is an incredibly important aspect about who Jesus is, who this little baby that was born in this nativity scene, which is a very traditional picture of Christmas. Not all the commercialization, which is actually going to be hard for us this year as we do Christmas. And maybe even for some of us, hard to not do family things, but we can still do Jesus as the Savior of the world, Jesus as God in the manger. Well, how can we actually support this statement that Jesus is God? Well, there's all kinds of places in the scripture that actually speak to the fact that Jesus is God. John chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus himself says, the Father and I are one. Philippians 2, 5 and 6 Paul, as he's writing to the Philippians, he says, you must have the same mind that Jesus Christ had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God was something to be grasped. You see, Jesus saw himself as God. The other thing that Jesus claimed to be, and we see in this passage, is that Jesus is creator. I want you to notice, as we read through verse 16, it says, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions 
or, ru or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. This verse makes it very clear that Jesus created all things. He was present at creation and all things were created for him. This is another incredibly important statement because Jesus is the creator. You see, if Jesus is the creator, then it follows that there must be a creation. And if there is a creation, there cannot be an evolution. <laughs> because that would mean that the creator could not make a creation. You see, this idea that Jesus is the creator is incredibly important. And he was the creator even as a baby in a manger. You see, what we believe about Jesus is incredibly important. And in fact, it actually informs or should inform everything else that we actually believe, even about the world around us. Because if Jesus is a creator, then there is a creation that he's created. John MacArthur said this, he said, we tend to focus our attention at Christmas on the infancy of Christ. The greater truth of this holiday is his deity. More astonishing than a baby in a manger is the truth that this promised baby is the omnipotent creator of the heavens and the earth. That is so true. Jesus is this little baby that was this creator of the universe, of the galaxies, of humanity, of animals, of vegetation, of all of these things. We see right here in Colossians that this is exactly who Jesus is. He is not only God, but he is creator. In verse 18, we continue to read and we see that Jesus is the leader. Not only is he God, not only is he creator, he is also the leader. And it says in verse 18 that he is the head of the body, the church. You see, Jesus is the leader of the church. It's his body and we're members of his body called the church. The church is his. It's not my church. It's not our church. It's not even your church. It's his church. And because it's his church, he's in charge of his church. So as Jesus being the leader, we have to ask this question, is he your leader? Is he your leader in your life? Because if we're all following Jesus, we will all be going in the same direction. And Jesus as leader means that he is the ultimate influencer in my life. It's not social media. It's not others' opinions that influence me. It's not fear. It's not all these side things. It's Jesus that is the leader and influencer in my life. So let's ask that question. Who is the major influencer in your life? Now, when we're talking about Jesus and the claims of Jesus, we are claiming that Jesus is the leader. Just as our brain in our head guides our body through our movements and our behaviors, so too does Jesus. That's what it actually means to be a leader. That's what it, what it means to be an influencer. And this is who Jesus is. So let's let him be our leader and influencer of their life. And this is actually an important claim to believe. Because if we believe it and put our trust in it and, and, and do the things that a follower would do with a leader, then we're actually saying that this is who Jesus is. Jesus is God. Jesus is a creator. Jesus is the leader. And even though we may not see him as the leader of our world right now, he is the leader. Here's the next thing that Jesus is, is that Jesus is the beginning. In verse 18, it continues to go on and it just says, he is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. 
Jesus is the beginning means that Jesus is first. It does not mean that he has a starting point. We see that in the verse. It says, firstborn of the dead, preeminent in everything, meaning first in everything. Jesus is the beginning of everything. So is Jesus first in your life? Is he before everything in your life? We need to stop and pause and ask this question. Because this is who Jesus is. And if this is who Jesus is, then we need to acknowledge that that's the place that he is in. So maybe you're asking the question, well, why should Jesus be first in my life? Well, the answer to that question is because that's actually his rightful place, because that's who he is. You see, here we have this God who is Jesus, who's the creator, who is the leader of everything. And it becomes incredibly obvious then that he that he is first, he is above all, he's preeminent, as it actually uses that word to describe him. So if he, if that's who he is, then we need to have him in those places. We need to say that Jesus is God. We need to say that he is the creator, therefore there is a creation. And if he is our leader, if he is the leader, then he needs to be our leader so that we're following him. And if he's first, that means that he must be first in my life. You see, Jesus needs, not because it's his need, but because it's his rightful place to be first in our lives. So how do I actually know if Jesus is first in my life? And that's something that maybe we need to reflect on this Christmas season as we are sitting back and maybe we we can't go out the same way that we could before. And as we're gathering around our our families, our immediate families, or maybe we've got a social bubble that we're uh, gathering together with, we need to actually stop and think about how do I know if Jesus is first in my life? Because if this is who he is, if, if he is first over all things, if he is the leader of his church and of this world and everything, then I really need to make sure that that's reflected in my own life. Well, well, here's how I can know if he's first in my life. Look at your bank account. What? Look at my bank account. How does that communicate whether God is first in my life? Well, what are, your, what are you giving to God financially? How are you supporting what God is doing in the world? How are you giving to others? How are you being kind and, and generous with your finances? Because everything that's in your bank account came from this leader who was preeminent, preeminent in everything. Another way that you can look at this to see if Jesus is first in your life is to look at your day timer. Like if there's no scheduling in your daytime or of Jesus, well, there's a pretty good indication that he's not first in your life because if he's not even in your daytime, or how in the world can he take any place in your life? You see, when we look at our bank account, when we look at our daytime, or we actually see the real truth in our own lives, whether Jesus is the beginning, whether Jesus is our leader, We can say that he is those things, we can claim those things, we can believe those things, but to put them into practice is what we actually need to do. And another way that we can actually see that Jesus is first in our life by looking at who our friends are. Because if our friends don't have Jesus first, that don't see Jesus as God, that don't see Jesus as the creator and leader, more than likely, we won't either. So this idea that Jesus is first, that he is preeminent, that he is above all things, that he is the beginning, 
is what we know about Jesus. We're told this about Jesus. So if this is who Jesus is, then let's have him in his rightful place this Christmas as we gather together and as we celebrate what Christ has done when he came into this world as a little baby in a manger and became what we understand to be the Savior of the world. And you know, for maybe you're listening this morning and you're just kind of struggling through all of these things about who Jesus is and maybe you've never even thought before about uh, the nativity scene and Christmas and maybe that's just something that's a, a traditional thing. But behind all of the stuff of Christmas, celebrating the birth of Jesus is the most important part about Christmas. Giving gifts is actually rooted in the gift that Jesus gave. Gathering together as family around the birth of a baby <laughs> is what Jesus gave us, which is why we gather together as families and celebrate. You see, the picture of Christmas is so much connected to this baby in a manger. And sometimes we don't even know and see the connection. Here's the next thing that we see about Jesus. Not only is Jesus God, not only is Jesus the head of the church, not only we see Jesus as the beginning, the firstborn among all things. And not only do we see him as the creator, but we see him as a reconciler. Jesus is the reconciler. Verse 20, as Paul is continuing to write this section, describing to the people of Colossae who Jesus is, he says in verse 20, and through him, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. You see, to reconcile means to turn enemies into friends, from conflict to peace. You see, Jesus reconciled all things to himself through the cross and the shedding of his blood on the cross. And this is just it's so important to understand about this baby Jesus that was born in this manger in this town of Bethlehem in this period of time where we set aside and call Christmas. You see, Jesus reconciled all things to himself through his death that came at Easter. What that means is that Jesus turned enemies into friends. That also means that if we don't have Jesus as our friend, that actually means that we are enemies of God. You and I can't make God be our friend. And in fact, this whole idea that we are enemies of God, that we are going in the opposite direction of God, is incredibly fundamental for us to even understand what's even happening in the world around us. Because the world around us is going in the opposite direction to that which God would like. And he, only he, could step in and fix and reconcile us as enemies of God. You and I can't do that. It had to actually come from God himself. And that is who Jesus, we needed a reconciler. We needed someone to come and help us become this friend of God, not an enemy of God. And that's who Jesus is. And that's what he came to do because a reconciler is a person who comes to make things right. And Jesus comes to us so that our relationship with God can be made right. That is who he is. And a reconciling person is ready to forgive, ready to move forward in a relationship 
And Jesus is holding out his hand to us today, wanting to reconcile the relationship between you and God, between me and God. That is who Jesus is. He is the reconciler, bringing together two things that could not be brought together unless someone else intervened. And God was the only one that could intervene between God and man to make this happen. And he does that through Jesus. So will you respond to the Reconciler this Christmas? Responding to the Reconciler is actually just stopping and believing that Jesus is God. That Jesus is the Creator. This is His world. He is the leader of His church, of this world. And he is the beginning. He is above all things. And because of all of that, he is also the great reconciler to reconcile those of us that have turned away from God and run away from God our whole lives so that we could spend eternity with him. And at Christmas time, we pause, we reflect, and we think about everything that Jesus has done for us. So this Christmas season, as we gather around our families in whatever social bubble we find ourselves, will you respond to Jesus? Will you make him first? Will you let him be the leader? Will you acknowledge him as creator? And if you've responded to the reconciler and you have peace through Jesus with God about your future and about all that's wrong in your life, then celebrate the birth of Jesus as this time of peace. And it's a time where God makes peace. And that's why Christmas can be so peaceful. And maybe this year with not being able to do the same amount of uh, commercialization because of the of the lockdowns, that this would be a great time for us to just get back as a people, to get back to the real true meaning of Christmas, which is this peaceful, quiet time, remembering that Jesus Christ, the baby in the manger, reconciled the world to himself and came into the world so that you and I could spend eternity with Jesus. This is what he's done. This is who he is. Can you believe it? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that we can just be reminded today of who you are, who Jesus is, what you've done for us. Lord, I pray today that we all of us in our own way would respond to you being our reconciler, no matter what situation we find ourselves in. And God, I pray that for everyone listening to this would be able to say, yes, Jesus is the major and the only influencer in my life and that he is my leader and that he is the one that is at first place. He is preeminent in my life and I acknowledge him as creator and as of God and ultimately my own reconciler. So God, I thank you that you are who you are and that we get to celebrate you at Christmas time and your birth. I pray today, I pray for everyone that would hear this, that we would all know who Jesus Christ is. And we pray all of this in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. church family. It's so great that we can gather together online and do communion. Today I have been talking all about the importance of the gospel. 
and how Christ dying on the cross for our sins is incredibly important. But we want to stop today and remember Christ's death. So if you've got your cracker and juice handy, please grab that right now. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples to have a Passover meal. And during that time, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said to his disciples, this is my body that is broken for you. And the cup represents his blood that was shed for us in payment for our sins. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. I pray, Lord, that we would fully comprehend what great importance it is that you sent Jesus into this world to set us free. So God, we thank you and we remember and proclaim your death until you come. And we pray this in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Take your bread and eat together. Now take the cup and let us drink together. God bless you, family. I hope you've enjoyed being together with us today as we have been just reflecting on who Jesus is and uh, gathering together as we get close to Christmas. Know that you're loved by those of us at Pinewoods and on your screen right now, you've got some questions that you can go, to, go through and just ask as a family or maybe even if you've got a watch party with your social bubble, happening you can just talk about these things as we prepare our hearts for christmas and uh, to be remembering and reflecting on who jesus is know that you're loved and we'll see you next week if not before god bless
struck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power. 